Hello friends, I am so excited to be with all of you today. First of all, if you are new to the channel, which so many of you are, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for choosing to spend some time with me. If you like lifestyle, home decor, DIYs, planning, organization, cooking, Basically, if you like anything, you're going to find something to connect to on this channel. But ultimately, the th thing that we connect to the most is acts of kindness and not only being better for ourselves, but being better for others every single day. If you are new, make sure you click subscribe. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you leave a comment. Also make sure you are following me over on Instagram because I love to connect with everyone over there and we have a lot of fun between lives and DMs and all the postings and all the interaction. None of this exists without any of you. So thank you, thank you, thank you for wanting to be a part of this amazing community that we have built. Towards the end of Vlogmas, I asked if you guys would want to see how I am transitioning my Christmas decor over to my winter decor. And there was a resounding yes. But I ended up sort of doing less than I thought. But I figured if we do this vlog style and I walk you through my ideas or how I adjusted things, I still think you can come away with a lot of great ideas. I'm going to kind of talk you through how I started the process and then we're gonna take a tour of the house and I'm gonna show you how I actually implemented it. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I think you'll get a lot of ideas. There are some fun DIYs built in throughout. The first thing I did was I chose a color palette that I wanted to use in my winter decor. For me, I really wanted to lean on the colors that we typically have in our house. So what I chose to ground myself in were three ribbons because I knew I could connect those throughout spaces. So these are the ribbons I chose. I'm going to leave them linked down below. I chose this really beautiful mustardy gold velvet, this chocolate brown velvet. And then lastly, I chose this very olive sage green. And I loved those three colors together because I knew they'd incorporate into a lot of the decor that I had packed away over Christmas. When I started taking down my Christmas decor, I actually took down every single thing and put it in one central location. For me, that was the center island of the kitchen. That way I could really take stock of everything that I had out. The next thing I did was I brought up everything that was put away for Christmas decor. That way I could really look at them in tandem and see which ones would still really work together. Knowing that all the bright greens, the red, anything glittery, that was all going to be packed away. But it was still nice to see everything that I had all in one place. I think our tendency is to pack as we go and then we forget what we could have used or are limited in our thinking around how our items can work together. After I got the house all cleared, then it was time to start decorating. And I knew I had to find opportunities to make things feel cohesive, as well as bring in these three colors to connect every space, but also allow some of my Christmas pieces to nicely transition into my winter decor. So now it's time to go vlog style and let's dive into the house. So I guess where we'll get started first is, I guess where we'll get started first is the entryway off our garage or our mud room. For me, it was all about just keeping this really clean and really simple. So I took all the Christmas pillows out. I did leave this wreath and I have thought about switching out this ribbon, but I thought the black worked so well in this space that I decided to leave it. Also, this really nice neutral wooden tree was an easy thing to keep just because I didn't want this to feel overly winterized. And in my laundry room, all that I kept in here was a simple hanging cluster of pine and pine cones, which I thought was a nice, easy way to keep a little bit of winter in this space. Same thing with our powder room. Once again, realizing that this wreath is so neutral that it would still work for winter. When we come into the kitchen, I knew it was going to be really important to start introducing that color scheme into the house. What you'll see here is a big glass vase full of pompous grass that is from our property. And then I simply used the mustard and the brown chocolate ribbons and 
added them around the neck of this vase just to start incorporating that color story that we were going to tell. Then this dried orange wreath that I made for Christmas once had a really, really bright green wreath on it. And I knew I needed to bring down the Kelly green of Christmas. So I used that sagey, olivey green ribbon and I just cut off the old one and replaced it with this one. And I am so happy with how it turned out. I think it is stunningly beautiful and I actually really love that green. And this citrus wreath will actually carry me into the spring, and if I store it correctly, it will last a really long time. I had a lot more out on my counters during Christmas time, but I knew that I needed to keep them clean and fresh. That's really important to me. But this garland, I could not part with. So I needed to find a way to incorporate it and also tie into what we're going to see happening in the living room. So what I did is I bought some of these wooden beads from Amazon and I strung them asymmetrically throughout the garland and then here just bundled a cluster of those ribbons of the three colors and brought them into this longer hanging section to really start connecting this idea that these three colors and this neutral wood tone was going to come through. You got a lot of the neutral clean pine from the entryway of the mudroom and now that's still coming through and connecting into this space. When you come into our breakfast nook and our larger built-in buffet. I knew I just wanted to keep this really light and airy, and I knew that things wouldn't really shift. These trees that I did have near my kitchen sink from McGee & Co, I knew I didn't want to put them away because I just love their spindliness, and I thought they connected so well with the decor. So I put the shorter one on this table, and brought the taller one into this corner. I love that pop of greenery on this wall, especially because it's backed up to this large window of our woods where we don't see a ton of green this time of year. Over here, I did simplify it a little bit. If you remember, during a Christmas decor video, I backed that with tartan plaid paper in those cabinets and my white glass upper cabinets, I did take that down and I brought in my terracotta pots that helps bring that earthy tone and texture. And then I kept all of these greens that were here, but in there were a bunch of antique sleigh bells. I took those out, so now it's just a clean white bowl with the greens. Same with my favorite Goodwill brass candlesticks that you will see all over our house. And then all that I did here is I brought this gold tray from my coffee table that I was using to house a bunch of tinsel glittery trees. I still wanted a little flash of gold over here to connect to the gold in the cabinet and the candlesticks. And then in this antique crock, I put pine picks that were in my tree and pine cones from outside into this little crock just to add some sort of green, but also that feeling of winter. When we get into the living room, once again, you're going to see my colors really start to come through. So I kept that terracotta-y, browny gold within the pillows. I actually have pillows in the green that have yet to arrive that will be going in these two corners. Then on my coffee table, I had found these three trees that very much went with the color story I knew I was going to tell with my winter decor. So I picked them up at a little small boutique and I just put them in the tray with a large candle. And then I switched out all my white taper candles for darker tones. So these are called Paris Gray. I knew that I wanted everything to tie together from the kitchen. So this is the same garland I used all winter, but it was filled with red and blue picks and glitter and gold and a ton of extra greens to make it really big and dramatic. I actually thinned it out, took out some of the greenery picks just to make it a little bit lighter. I strung the wooden beads asymmetrically and then once again did larger clusters of the ribbons on this side as well as this side, and then picked this pompous grass and put it in this large vase, once again, tying that color, and they just feel so dramatic. I changed up my white, bright white Christmassy taper candles for these moody black ones, which I love them against the black of the fireplace. On the entertainment center, I really just kept everything 
back to almost exactly where it is, but I want to show you a little trick. This frame is from Studio McGee's line at Target. All this is is a printed picture that I cut to size and made it fit into this frame, and it's covering up a very spring scene. I typed in French winter painting. This is what came up. I printed it, cut it, plopped it inside this frame. So it's a really easy way to upgrade a piece of decor and make it winterized and not damage what's underneath. So when it gets green outside again and spring is arriving, I will pop that out and the nice green landscape will shine through. This lantern was in my entryway. I moved it into here because I knew I wanted to bring in gold. I left the plain greenery that I had from Christmas as well as our big cluster of birch logs because I also thought those gave a nice wintry vibe. But once again, it doesn't feel overly loaded with decor which I think is really important. When we move into this section of the house, this is our main entryway to our front door. In this cabinet, I actually set out all the things that are always in here. The only thing I did was I put some pine cones in this bowl that are typically not there. I kept these little white mini birch logs. And then in this bottom, I just laid a couple of my pine picks and one of the extra birch logs there, just so there was a touch of winter inside the cabinet. Here, once again, I just put everything back to where it was except for the lantern and keeping the greenery in that space. And I also knew in the dining room I needed it just to feel clean and light. So what I did is I took off all the place settings, all the table runners, took down the big huge tree, clearly all of that decor, and all I did was make this arrangement inside this pot with some pine cones, and then took a little piece of my ribbon because there was a bright red bow on this deer, and I changed it out. I love how it still brings in that color from the rest of the spaces. During Christmas, I had this filled with big black and white checkered boxes with red ribbons. I took all of those away, still kept all the greeneries in my lanterns. My arrangements that I made during Vlogmas are still doing so well. Everything is frozen into place and they're just doing excellent. And then, I'm leaving this wreath up because I really do love it. Instead of a big red bow, I just tied a chocolate velvet ribbon to it and I still think it really works in the space. I knew I wanted to keep something in this space and also do a fun DIY. This is where I ended up. This canvas has always been here. It's actually a really large canvas. It's by five feet by three and a half feet wide. When I bought it, it had a lot of blues and grays. It seemed to go with the house. So I just bought it at Home Goods to fill the space, but I knew I wanted to really do something different with it. So I painted the whole canvas in several coats of floral white from Benjamin Moore, and then did this raw edge inside a rectangle in Cracked Pepper by Bear. Then this live wreath is one that I made with a wreath form from Michaels. And I decided to use and introduce a different ribbon, but I just felt the pattern of the stripe and the creaminess of the white ribbon worked so well with this part of the house that I just put a thumbtack in and hung it down to the center. And that canvas will be really cool and modern when nothing is hanging on it. But how fun seasonally to drop and hang something and use this canvas to frame something else. It's a simple DIY. Hop over to my Instagram. I talk about it a lot more in detail. And you can also see how I accomplished the raw edge of black around the canvas. I hope that you enjoyed this video and all that I want is for you to take even one new idea away that you can incorporate into our homes. I know many of you keep your things up till after New Year's, so I hope this video hits at a great time, but who says you can't reach back into a Christmas bin and pull something out that you didn't think you could use and incorporate it into your house for winter. If you like this video, get ready for 2021 because we're going to be talking a lot more about DIYs, home decor, and all the good stuff that I mentioned earlier. In the meantime, make sure you're subscribed, you're following me here on YouTube, you're also over there with my Instagram family, and I will end this video like I end all of them. Take care of yourself, take care of others, and be kind. Kindness is free, give it to everyone. Until next time, bye-bye.